Okay, so in this video we're going to use the conceptual representation of fraction multiplication to develop the algorithm for multiplying fractions. And we're going to use these five fraction multiplication problems to do that. So we're going to start with one half times one fourth, or to put it another way, one half of one fourth. So there's one fourth, and we want one half of that, and so we're going to separate that until we get it broken into halves of one fourth, and we can see that that is one eighth. So one half of one fourth is one eighth. So now let's look at one fifth times one half, or one fifth of one half. So there's one half, and we want to break that one half into five equal pieces. And when we can see when we have five equal pieces, that's broken into tenths. And so one fifth of one half is one tenth. Okay, so let's take a look at one fifth times three halves. So this is only slightly different than the last problem. And so first we need three halves, and we want to break that into fifths. And we can see that when we break this into tenths here, we can divide each of these into fifths. And so we need one fifth of this. So each of these is a fifth. As you can see, five of them make up the whole thing. And we want one fifth of this. And so in this case, that is three one tenths. Now, another way that you could look at this is to think of three smaller, simpler problems. So we have one-fifth of three halves, or we can think of one-fifth of each of these one-halves. And so in the same way, we have our half broken up into fifths now, and you can see that each one of those fifths is one-tenth, and altogether those three one-tenths make three-tenths. So we can look at this in a more numeric way by thinking about one-fifth times three halves as one-fifth times three times one-half. And because we can use the commutative property in multiplication, this can be rewritten as three times one-fifth times one-half. And we know that one-fifth times one-half is one-tenth from before. So we're just looking at the question three times one-tenth or three-tenths. And that's similar to this idea. We have one-tenth, one-tenth, and one-tenth. Three one-tenths is three-tenths. So let's step that problem up just a bit. So we had one-fifth times three-halves, and now we're going to do seven-fifths times three-halves. So first, let's get our three-halves. And as before, we want to break that up into tenths to help us break that eventually into fifths. And we know that we want fifths, so there's our first fifth, and, the, and what we want is seven fifths. So we need seven of those. Now, keeping in mind that when we're multiplying seven fifths times three halves, seven fifths is a little bit bigger than one, and so our answer should be a little bit bigger than three halves. So there's two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, and as expected, five fifths is exactly one full amount of the three halves. There is six fifths, and finally, seven fifths. And so this is seven fifths of one half. And if we bring our tenths in, That's a total of 21 tenths. Let's actually put our fraction signs on there. 
So 7 fifths of 3 halves is 21 tenths. Now in the previous question, we looked at 1 fifth times 3 halves or 1 fifth of 3 halves and we were able to represent that with this 3 tenths as the answer. Now this question isn't much different. This is just 7 times 1 fifth times 3 halves. So 7 times the 1 fifth of 3 halves that we previously had. And so we can visually represent that as 7 of these representations and still get 21 tenths. Similarly, we can think of that 1 fifth of 3 halves as 3 times 1 fifth times 1 half as we did earlier and we represented that in this way. And in the same way as we just did, there are 7 of these and that's 21 tenths. So either way you look at it, we can rewrite this using the commutative property or visually and get 21 tenths. So let's try one more, and hopefully by this time you're seeing a pattern here, but we'll do it the conceptual way first, and hopefully you'll anticipate the answer. So we have 5 halves times 3 quarters. So that means we want 5 halves of 3 quarters. So there's our 3 quarters, and we want that to be broken into halves. So right now we can't see halves there. This is actually, since we have three-fourths, this looks like it's broken into thirds if this is our whole. But we can see that if we break this into eighths, then this works out to one half. So let's show that. So there is one half of three-fourths. And there is two halves of three-fourths. We want five halves of three-fourths. So there's three halves, four halves, and five halves of three-fourths. And we would expect five halves is a little bit more than two, uh, and so we should expect this to be a little bit more than twice as big as three-fourths. And so we can take our eighths and see exactly how many that is. And in this case, we see that is 15 eighths represents five halves of three-fourths. So five halves times three-fourths is 15 eighths. So let's take a look at this in a different way. We know that we can rewrite five halves times three-fourths as five times one-half times three times one-fourth. And we know using the commutative property that we can move some of that around. So if we look at just this bit here, this one-half times three times one-fourth, we can rewrite that as three times one-half times one-fourth. And we already have seen that one-half times one-fourth is equal to one-eighth. So there's the visualization of that. And we just have three of those. So there's three times one-half times one-fourth. And really, all we have now is five times all of that, which gives us our 15 one-eighths or 15 eighths. So those are the five problems that we've done. We've done them conceptually, and so hopefully by this time you've got a sense of what the algorithm for fraction multiplication is. What you should have noticed by now is that for each of these fraction multiplication questions to get the denominator, we just multiply the denominators of the previous, or of the given fractions. Two times four equals eight, five times two equals 10. And to get the numerators, we just multiply the numerators. One times one equals one, 1 times 3 equals 3, 7 times 3 equals 21, 5 times 3 equals 15. So given that, if we're using that algorithm, what is the value of 5 thirds times 7 fourths? So to get this using our algorithm, we just want to multiply the numerators, 5 times 7, and the denominators, 3 times 4, to get 35 twelfths. And so we should check this using our conceptual method. And so we want to check 5 thirds of 7 fourths. So there is our 7 fourths. And we want to take this and break it up into three equally sized pieces to get thirds. And in order to break this into thirds, we probably need each of these pieces to be into thirds. And that happens when we are using the twelfths. This is, should be starting to make sense now as the two denominators were 
thirds and fourths. So we're going to end up with working with twelfths here. And so there is one third of seven fourths, and there is two thirds of seven fourths, and three thirds of seven fourths. We want five thirds of seven fourths. So there's four. And one more, that's 5 thirds of 7 fourths. Let's add our fractions in here so we can see them. And we want twelfths down here. Uh, we don't have twelfths yet, so let's add twelfths to the mix here. And there's twelfths, and so we can drag those in. There's 12 twelfths, 24 twelfths, and Looks like we're going to need another 11 to get a total of 35 twelfths, which is what we would expect. So we verified the algorithm for multiplying fractions, which is to take the two fractions and multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators to get the answer.